This week's episode of Awesome Cast is brought to you by Drobo, the lovely people who will make sure that your data is safe at all times. Go ahead and check it out at awesomecast.com. Click on the Drobo link on the right hand side to learn more. Hey guys, it's the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg on the couch again, repping the Skull Crusher Mountain. And uh, and with me, as usual, is Rob De La Creta, surrounded by his uh, his primary colors. My primary <laughs> colors. That's exactly what's happening. You know, every time somebody says Skull Crusher Mountain, that Jonathan Colton song like hits repeat on my head. Yep, yep. It's going to be there for the rest of the night. The, that's Thank not necessarily a bad thing. The rest of the night. No, definitely not. Definitely it's not. We can queue it up here. I mean, we have the internet. It's a good song. That's right. That's right. Do you what not you? like the song, Rob? I love the song. Okay, just making sure. There, honestly, there are a bunch of Jonathan Colton songs that I'm really not into, but Skull Crusher Mountain is top five. There's a lot of John, Jonathan Colton songs that he's not into. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So by admission. So and and of course uh, behind the helm. Uh, I had to put down my glass. Behind the helm, guiding the USS Awesome Cast is Chachi. Of Chachi says dot net. Warp speed, Captain. Video game player extraordinaire. <laughs> Professional. Did, how many times did you beat Super Mario, uh, uh, Super Smash Brothers, in the what half an hour you sat down? Twice. Twice. Yeah. Twice. There you go. <laughs> that gives you an idea. So, so how you doing? How's your week there, Chachi? Um, today, mm-hmm. being the first day of the week, work wise. Yes. Um, there was a holiday for those that may be overseas. Yeah, uh, I'm sure what, there's plenty of you. Monday was Labor Day. Yes. So today was our first day back to work, mm-hmm. and it's already hit the lowest it's gonna hit. Okay. Like my week cannot possibly get any worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Uh, four o'clock came around. My boss was off today. Thank God. <laughs> she emails me at four o'clock, and says, "Is the internet broken?" <laughs> wait, wait. See, he wait. got it right away. I had to work into it to figure it out. Wait, Rob. <laughs> Rob. All right. No, let me let me break this down for those of you that haven't figured it out yet. All right. <laughs> First off, I'm at work. She's at home. So, she's literally talking about the entire internet being broken. And she sent to find out. Yes, and she via sent, email. Yes. Over the internet that may or may not be broken in her head. Yes. Yeah. Right. All because she couldn't get to Google. Well, maybe she was hoping to uh, figure out if the internet was broken if you didn't respond. <laughs> That's true. Well, no. Because how, then how long do you wait <laughs> to find out? Well, my response was, um, what? <laughs> <laughs> what is that head of IT? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, um, what? And then I, I started yelling at my coworkers. Oh, so the typical day. Because gotcha. um, she's. No, <laughs> that's mind. all right. That's all right. We're not going to get into it. <sighs> well, guys, uh, for uh, for everybody else who has figured out the internet is still working, this is <laughs> the, the awesome cast. Is so you can you can contact us oh, over the internet. Know. We're at awesomecast.com. Contact at awesomecast.com. Mm-hmm. What the hell are you? Uh, oh, you class. can also give us a call at four. I'm sorry, seven two four. 25 a cast that's 724-252-2278 man the talking is working you can catch us live right here every tuesday 7 p.m eastern join us in the fabulous chat room uh, the fabulous chat room we just installed a very room. nice carpet a very nice <laughs> carpet in there um it matches the drapes uh, Hot Wheels is joining <laughs> us. Unemployed Jobber, WrestleFan 2011. Obviously, they're waiting around for the Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, so, <laughs> but they're joining us no, anyways. They're, they're, they're here. completely here for this. Right. It's coincidental they yes. have wrestling themed names. That's right. But that is completely okay. That's right. Uh, you can also listen to us. We're on the iTunes, MediaFly, Roku, Blip TV, uh, YouTube, and of course now on Stitcher. You can get that at Stitcher.com or find it in your associated app store. I don't know if it's on Blackberries though. 
Who cares? That does remind me something we need to do with Rob here in a couple weeks. Uh, but anyways, uh, we uh, no not much for fan interactions. Chachi, you had the most fan interactions on Twitter. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's in the rundown, so we'll work with that. Yeah, uh, but I'm that's sorry. okay. And you know, if you have any commentary on this, you know, and you are on Twitter, uh, AJ uh, has been really good about this. Is they they've been tagging it. Uh, AC, the number for for example, this is episode 67, obviously. Uh, so if you have any comments about anything we're talking about, whenever you listen to it, just go and tweet us and and tag it uh, at at the awesome cast. Of Can course. I not wear pants in two episodes? <laughs> Who says you're wearing pants right now? That's very. No, you, I don't think you understood what he was asking. But oh, I don't know. I don't understand what you're asking. This then. is episode 67. 67. Oh, in two episodes from now, yes. none of us are allowed to wear pants, and you're not allowed to use the crotch cam. Right. Well, you okay. know what What also <laughs> is two episodes from now? Is it the live one at PodCamp? Yeah. It is the live one at PodCamp! <laughs> it is! <laughs> Am I the only one paying wow! attention? To that? <laughs> I, yeah! I keep forgetting. No, my week is packed next week. I you're, thought that's what you were asking. I thought you were asking no. to have no pants at the live awesome. No, event. I completely. I keep forgetting that there's an episode before pod camp. Right. So mm-hmm. I, I. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No pants and two no episodes. No pants. Live audience. What's gonna happen, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, of course, you can check. That. Hey, we're going to be Sunday, the last session Sunday, at uh, at pod camp, pod camp, Pittsburgh dot com. Yeah, we're check headlining. That out. We're headlining. I guess that's it. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, oh, hey, Mike, 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 Mike. Whoa, 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 what's going on? Uh, so we're doing a session. You didn't tell me we were doing a session. <laughs> oh, I told you I was going to go ahead and pull the trigger on that. Did you? Yeah, I did. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Right. I can check my DMs and it won't say, oh, I'm fishing around, I'll let you know. It, was, it said, hey, I'm pulling the trigger on that thing we were talking about. What thing? That really? write the bear Twitter panel that I have to fill out the rest of the panel for oh, in the next like week that. and a half. So if you are interested and have an opinion on your rights to the internet, contact us at mikesorg at, aus- at gmail.com. Um, so there's that. There's that. Yeah. So, um... I definitely don't have that DM. <laughs> it's from like weeks ago. The last, the last thing I have on it was uh, feelers. Feelers? Feelers? Okay. Oh, that's not you, you throwing feelers out and uh, haven't really decided. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll do something. Okay. It's a panel. How hard is a panel? Anyway, let's talk about tech news. Let's talk about the news. You know, hey, you email a lot, right? You know no. what? You, well, My internets are broken. I can't email. Yeah. Oh, I see. I Do see. you live in Nebraska now? <laughs> um, did somebody just knock? No, that I you? Did. Yeah, it was me. Okay. Um, the U.S. Postal Service may be in serious trouble. They are going out of business. Do we care? Um, Clearance sale. Get all your envelopes half off. <laughs> <laughs> and is this a direct result of email? No. No? No, this is a direct result of government funding. Government yeah. inadequacy, yes. <clears throat> overfunding, something that can't sustain itself. Right. Yeah, I mean, I mean I there's mean, a lot of things at play for why uh, why it kind of took a tumble. It certainly, the internet did not help things. Uh, no. That's the easy thing they're blaming it on. But it's also, if you look at the way the USPS has been run, uh, no offense to anybody who works for the USPS, you know, they're like, doing a good job and all that, but the folks who run it are putting, have been always... Yeah, it's more of an old boys club where, not in the sense that, like, you know, old racist dudes run the company, but uh, more in the sense that people still get an outrageous pension for working for the USPS. Mm-hmm. If they were able to make it a more, like, legitimate, if you were to work for a private company versus a government-funded company, if you were to take the pension down to that level, I would guarantee we'd have several more years of the USPS, as well as they need to revamp business models and, and actually compete with companies like UPS and FedEx. Yeah, yeah. I uh, do, do you ever consider them as you know FedEx UPS competition? I mean, I know well, well most of my stuff comes from Amazon for, via FedEx. I think right. You know, I mean, these... they've they've completely sidestepped the the, the, the government thing because they they they've been able to pro, you know these are private companies and they've been able to to prioritize and yeah. And I mean, honestly, it's so a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. They've already. Um, I think they said. I'm just making up numbers at this point, but there's a report out uh, like last month, I think, that said that the USPS at the end of this quarter would be something like $4 billion behind what they should be. 
Okay. Uh, probably bigger than that, come to think of it. But so yeah, a lot of people are going to lose their job. A lot of they already slated something like 800 post offices that are just going to be shut down because they're, there's just no reason to keep them open anymore. Yeah. So that, it kind of sucks. But this is another one of those things, much like what the government did with uh, with NASA, where they they gave it up to private corporations to create um, competition to do better things. So with the USPS out of the picture, it means that either UPS or FedEx or any of those other companies now have a reason to look at doing small parcel service. Yeah, because there's really nobody else to replace that right now. No, not at all. So, well, not right now, but I'm sure... Oh, but somebody will step yeah. in. Somebody will step in. Um, and the reason we're talking about this on the tech show, like I said, because stuff like email, uh, I mentioned an uh, unemployed jobber in the chat is talking about you know, auto pay. He's asking if it, it will kill the stamp collecting too. Uh, stamp collecting will keep going, I'm sure. Um, uh, actually, no. What's that? Well, unless the government doesn't kill stamps. I can't, but that well, kind of goes hand in hand with the USPS. I think it goes, yeah, because USPS is the one that releases them. Right. And they do the more, you know, you, you always go to the, and they have like the Superman stamp right. collection. Like that's another revenue generation for them is to license those kinds of things. So, I mean, if they kill USPS, I mean, mm-hmm. they would have to specifically and be like, oh. What, what happens to Netflix? Or is that finally now in the coffin of Netflix uh, DVD set service? Netflix would create their own delivery service, or you think? if they yeah. if they had to, I mean, okay. if that if they're if that much of their uh, subscription base is male, mm-hmm. then um, they'll they'll find a way to make it happen. They would they would probably just buy up a, a smaller delivery service, yeah, like, uh, like DHL or something, right? Like that. So, and that goes along with what the the chat room is saying mm-hmm. with the uh, delivery routes being subcontracted. So. Absolutely. So that could be interesting. Well, you know, even to the point where, you know, how much mail comes to, how much mail does come to you? Like I say, a lot, of, whenever possible, I'm on auto pay, go paperless, you right. know, because I don't even use them. I look online. I don't I, like getting mail. No, no. <laughs> and I get junk mail. I, 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 I Probably three quarters of the mail I receive goes straight into the recycling bin. I always feel bad when I'm working down at the cafe helping out and the mailman's going around door to door in the, in the, in the building hands me my mail, and I don't want to just turn around and dump it all in the trash because I don't want any of it, you know? Because how much mail do we get out of business like that? It's all it's all junk and credit cards and print services and stuff. There's not a single thing to, valuable in that mail. So there there's, you go. Um, That's completely devalued it. There's a supply company that we, that we like, once a year we'll buy some plastic totes from, it's a Global Industrial, and they send out these catalogs. And what happens is, so there's only a handful of people who work at my company, and every time each of us goes to order something, we don't want to ask the other person for like their login credentials. So we each have an account, which means that each of us oh. gets like the monthly delivery of the global supply catalog. Oh, man. And that... we use them as placemats for pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like the the U like we get the U line book here? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, we get U line, yeah. we get MSC B&H, Direct. B and H is obscene sometimes. Oh yeah, it's like really, really. You're a tech, you're a video technology company, and you're still delivering me a giant paper catalog. I think this thing is bigger than the Sears catalog used to be. It's 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 crazy. How many trees once a year they put this? out the big one that's like super. Yeah, big. yeah, and they put kind of like like the the uh the they're like an encyclopedia appendix, you know, that they <laughs> release yearly. Um, but but still, um, I, I it's interesting. This is going to be a real big shift shift, I think. And uh, ironically, today I was looking at exactly how much is it for me to mail some stamps to our uh, longtime fan in uh, London. Eight bucks for those wondering. You mailed them stamps? I, no, no, I'm not gonna mail stamps. Stickers. Oh, okay. did I say stamps? I'm yes. sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Stickers. Like I was these... confused. I was like, wait, why does the UK guy want American stamps? I just want to send. Some... <laughs> Maybe he collects them. I don't know. I just want to send him some of these. Some of these, man. Okay. So, so yeah, that's what's going on with Netflix and the U.S. Postal Service. Okay. Also, Netflix. Mm. Uh, Stars declares that it's not renewing its services with netflix yeah that's been a lot of interesting conversation about that this this last week uh well actually the one i have quoted in here uh our friend justin kanaki on twitter stars declares it would rather march into the tar pit than make 300 million dollars by dealing with netflix uh that's one way to look at it um so yeah and of course if you, if you haven't noticed if you, if you have netflix streaming a lot of those movies you'll see in the corner uh stars play which is the digital 
you know, distribution of stars. You can get kind of like HBO Go. Um, but not for the iPad, strangely enough. Um, and you could get some shows like I think Spartacus was on there, a couple other ones. Um, and they've been kind of pulling back on that. And, uh, and yeah, they're, they're pulling out. Uh, one tweet I saw, um, was, uh, so, so now Netflix, uh, HBO goes greater than Netflix. To which point I pulled up HBO Go and to see they're, they are offering 108 movies at any given time. Let's see. Versus how many is Netflix? Like, Thousands? Uh, I'm looking it up now. Okay. Um. But um, I I don't know. I think what we do, and I think Sony's supposed to be going too, which I couldn't tell you what movies are Sony and not Sony. Movies come to go on that come and go on Netflix so much you don't really think about it. I don't think. I think Disney would be the only one you would notice, like um, if you saw like China. Lion King and Toy Story all over the place. Um. But, uh, but, you know, and then, you know, it was brought up $300 million. That's, that's a lot of money that Netflix can go and buy other content, not just what Stars offers. You have any thoughts on this, Rob? I know you've had some interesting, I know your, your experience with Netflix has not been so great. I hate Netflix. <laughs> so, I mean, well, was there any, did you note, watch any Stars, notice any Stars? Because you always get the thing at the beginning that tells you if there's going to be brief nudity. Nope. Nope. Okay. Honestly, what my relationship with stars has been, oh, hey, I want to watch this thing. Somebody recommended this movie. Or, oh, I can't, it can't get, I can't stream it. So mm-hmm. you have to get it. And then I have to pay for the, no, okay, I'll, I'll just do something else. That's my entire relationship. Oh, with I can't find it now, but uh, the other day I looked it up and it was like 90,000 movies. Yeah. Or yeah. something like that. And they're all crap. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know that that number isn't accurate, like to the T. Mm-hmm. But I mean, okay, so Star supplies about nine thousand movies to Netflix, okay, and TV shows and things of that nature. They got plenty of stuff. I mean, I... so that still leaves Netflix with eighty-one thousand movies and TV shows and stuff that you and can that, watch. Now. I think it depends on what you're looking for. Are you the person that will watch like uh, until you got you know saw all of them? You know uh, the movies they're on. You know Sunday afternoon. They're from a few years ago, or are you looking for? I'm looking for. Uh, uh, Thor just came out, and that's what I want to watch. You know, and you'll get that quicker with HBO, but not that much quicker. Like. Thor? Yeah, I believe so. Two bodies? Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> but there is that factor. Um, yeah, and and this was even happening. Uh, um, Unemployed Driver says he noticed that Stars is already dropping some of the television shows on Netflix. About two months ago. Uh, and they're putting like, I think 90 day delays on some of their original programming. So they've already been screwing with it. Disney's been unhappy with them because their content found its way on Netflix via the deal with stars. And they're like, well, we didn't really agree with it. And they're like, yeah, you kind of did. Um, so th- this has always been a back and forth because I-, I think because Netflix is, a- is a threat to all everything else going on. Um, but yeah, but yeah. So, I mean, I'm not. Says, <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you have the camera on you for that part? I don't know. Because <laughs> you were talking and I interrupted you. Um, but no, I'm, I'm not going to miss stars. I mean, I'm still going to have my crazy marathons of something like Doctor Who There's or. There's 81,000 other things I'm that like, you can I'm watch. sorry. You know what I watched last week that, you know, I wouldn't have found otherwise? A French zombie movie called The Horde. It's subtitled <laughs> and everything. But I've never seen fist fighting zombies. Wow. Check it out. Check it out. Um, but no, yeah, you, you get to see a lot of that stuff you usually don't. It's not stuff you like, oh, it's a big the- theatrical thing. Ink was another really good one. That was kind of like this artsy, independent film. Um, but it, and let's say a lot of older stuff I miss. I never saw Memento. Listen, I, I watch a lot of random crap on Netflix. Mm-hmm. I mean, stuff that I wouldn't watch any other time. Mm-hmm. Like, I watched half of Helvetica. <laughs> um,. I watched all of Exit through the gift shop. Yeah. And it's did. all just stuff that's on... Oh, the documentaries. I love the yeah, documentaries it's all just there. stuff that popped up in my, hey, this is recommended for you, because you watched <laughs> this. You know, I watched anime like a month and a half ago, and I have the weirdest stuff on my top ten picks. It's uh, it's a little weird, but other than that... And plus, I'm not the only one in the household watching it, so I get really weird stuff from time to time. 
And I'm like, I, why? Where does this come from? Well, the roommates are really into those ghost shows. Oh, yeah. So now so I'm getting all of that all stuff. All ghost from, shows yeah. mixed with <laughs> stuff like Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah. It's, it's all uh, Miramax, yeah. uh, Power Rangers, and ghost stuff. <laughs> <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> tremendous. Well, you know, another place you can get video uh, coming up soon. Uh, you guys hear about Amazon's Kindle tablet coming up here? Nope. It sucks. It sucks? I mean, it sucks. What, it sucks. What, what's your okay? What, what's going on with the Amazon t- uh, uh, Kindle tablet? It, why, why do you think it stinks? I was actually kidding, but um, <laughs> it's it's a seven inch tablet, right? Uh, I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be a seven inch. Yes, and which, it's going to be locked down into its own app store. Is the idea? Yes. Basically, the idea that I, from what I've heard and read so far, is it's going to be an Android thing, kind of like you know the Nook is Android, right? And you can just get stuff off of the Nook store and everything like that um apparently this one yeah this one's gonna be locked down to amazon content amazon on video uh amazon kindle so um so it's gonna be this is what you get and you get everything in the amazon ecosystem right uh there's rumors of uh you know right now prime is 80 dollars a year you get two day two day free shipping and you get free some free stri- streaming on their uh, video service. Well, I mean, I have that. It's pretty cool. Uh, supposedly, if you you buy this, it's going to include Prime with the device. So, speaking of the the video service, mm-hmm. uh, there's this thing going around Twitter where you click the link and send a tweet and you get five dollars worth of credit for their uh, streaming streaming video. Okay. <laughs> so I did it. I got my five dollars worth of credit. I'm like, hey, you know I gotta use that yesterday, yeah. by the way. I'm like, you know what? I'll go ahead and test it out. Yeah. I started watching the Dark Knight. Yeah. And I kept pausing it because I was at work. Mm-hmm. And it's the only streaming video service that, that isn't blocked at work. <laughs> <laughs> so I I'm I had to keep pausing it. Well Amazon interpreted that as it being a poor quality playing of the video. So I got my money back for that. Nice. So I'm still nice. at five bucks. You know, I actually, uh, Hulu has been kind of, you know, taking me off. We were talking about before how it doesn't have everything on Hulu Plus. I had become a few episodes expired of Burn Notice, Chuck. And I'm like, you know what? It's two bucks a piece. I know Amazon's pretty decent because I tried some of their free streaming stuff with Prime. Uh, let's just get these programs so we can get caught up and we can watch the rest on Hulu. And I ended up spending five bucks because like, we got two episodes of Burn Notice, got an episode of Chuck. And it dropped it to like ninety seven cents of seven dollar ninety nine, and uh, and, I, and when I tried it out before, it was from like a five dollar credit, like you got. Right. Um, they gave me, I think I sent something back or something like that, or I had to file a complaint, and they sent me five dollars worth of uh, credit like months ago, randomly. Yeah. So I mean, they're really, but they're really trying to get people to use this. Too. They're nice about it. So I mean, granted, it's not like if you can, if you have Prime and you have the streaming stuff. It's not much. It really is kind of the same stuff as Netflix. No, it's not. It's not. It's like it, a thousand times worse. Well, yes, I mean, but everything I do find on there is already on the Netflix. Uh, the it? only differences I see are stuff like uh, "Girl That Kicked a Hornet's Nest" is uh, English dubbed instead of uh, just subtitles. Um, and there's something else I found on there too. Oh yeah, but I mean, just like kind of alternate versions of that. Uh, they had. They had the one Doctor Who special that I couldn't find on Netflix on streaming and had to get the disc for. Happened to be on streaming over there. I mean, it's just little stuff like that. I I don't think I would... I don't think it really would be my prime source of streaming stuff like Netflix would be. But they're trying to be comparable. And I think they're just kind of providing that easy stuff so you see, okay, cool, I can buy these new episodes for $1.99. Hopefully loop you into there. So, um, like it's a loss leader or something. So, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's it's got like, yeah yeah it's got a long way to go. But if they start getting dedicated devices like this, I don't know, that could make a difference. Espe- yeah. Especially if that's what you get anyways in lieu of the Kindle you see now. You get this device to read your books on, and oh this thing I can rent videos on too. Okay. Hmm. I mean a device that you can uh, you know that's not five hundred dollars. You can read the book and then go ahead and rent the movie. That's that's kind of interesting. And plus, it has its own app store already. Because you know, do you use the Amazon app store, Chachi? Yeah, once a day. Once a day for the free one. Yep. Okay. That that's it. 
Okay. And I, it, usually it's only games that I don't But they like. have just about everything that would be important. Yeah. Do you think it's better vetted than uh, the Android market? Not really. No? Mm. You, the guy, I haven't heard of any security problems with apps like I have in the uh, Android market. That's because uh, it's not open source. Open it, it is actually going through an approval process you, through Amazon. Yeah, you have to sign in to Amazon in order to download crap. Yeah, so, so they're mean, liable. Yeah, so they're going to pay more attention, right? Than Google so. does. So because Google's pretty open about what they submit. Yeah, I could download porn games if I want to. <laughs> That's good to know. I don't want to, but good I could. To know. Just hypothetically, yes, hypothetically, if I want, you can do to. that thing Steve Jobs doesn't want you to do on his iPad, right? Even though you could really do that anyways on his iPad, if you really think about it, guys. Um, so, yeah. As of two hours ago. Two hours ago. And I, I, found, I pulled this up so I could bring up the article that you said the link was broken for. Um, <laughs> AT&T <laughs> has yet another lawsuit on their hands. Yeah, these are coming left and right here. Uh, Sprint has joined the U.S. Department of Justice. Okay. I, you know, I did hear that that U.S. Department of Justice thing might not be completely true. Uh, last week, the Department of Justice filed a civil antitrust lawsuit. Okay, so it is true. Go yes. Ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. But, um, yeah, so Sprint has joined the Justice Department in saying that what AT&T is going to do, or trying to do, mm. isn't cool. <laughs> it's not cool, man. It's and not cool. And you know who makes out in this deal? Huh. T-Mobile. Because <laughs> T-Mobile gets $3 billion no matter what. Yeah, that could help. That so, could definitely help buy more commercials and, with that little cute girl. And they're getting the iPhone anyhow. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't matter. Well, and, you know, I started thinking about because I've seen the commercials. And uh, and I know you, you've, I've had conversations with you lately, lately about T-Mobile. We talked about here on the show and how great they are. Man, $49 for unlimited everything? I mean, granted, not unlimited, unlimited. You know, I, I Sprint's offering truly unlimited for $79. Yeah, but that but commercial still, lies. Well, now what, what's wrong with that commercial? They say that T-Mobile only gives two gigs of data, and that's not no, true. No, that's five, isn't it? Yeah. When it's unlimited. Yeah. So Right. Um, so, and I was thinking about that, and, and you know, I if the iPhone goes over, I don't want to go to Sprint. I don't want to go to Verizon. I don't want a CDMA phone, because there's the inherent problems with that, of, of course. Would I go to T-Mobile for a $49 plan? I'm on AT&T. Now, granted, I don't like AT and T. I think I don't think anybody likes thinks AT and T is a grand company. <laughs> obviously, when when there's such obvious glaring issues with the CEO saying stupid crap, Rob likes AT and T. That makes it obviously they do not care about the customer. <laughs> don't you, Rob? I've, I've never had a reason to talk to AT and T uh, customer support. How about that? Wow. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, oh, that's because you'll fix your own crap. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's true. <laughs> They've screwed up my plan a couple of times. Kind if of my like, phone breaks, I'm going to Apple. Right. Yeah. Screw up my plan. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And from what I hear, like Chachi, you've had like the best service I heard of for replacing phones. I've never. You've had, had a basically a no questions asked replacement policy. Right. For stuff for your phones. In all now fairness, it's kind of weird that both your Google phones have been had to be replaced at least once. Right. That's something else entirely. But they seemed like they were really good about it. Right. And 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 that as long as you call. And you do everything they want you to do while they're on the phone with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? I, I just, I just like, I just like do everything to a T. No, what I mean is the, they're going to ask you some questions. Like, I mean, and no matter how tech savvy you are, mm -hmm. you, they're going to want you to reboot your phone, which if you're, you're tech savvy, you've already done before you call them. Yeah. And then uh, if the problem persists, they're going to want you to restore your phone. Mm -hmm. Which you've which, probably already done. Which, if you're tech savvy, you've already done. Which means <laughs> it's not going to take you that long to, to uh, wipe they, your phone again. And they take your word for it. Yeah. Okay. And if they're not going to, even if they don't take your word for it, if you've already wiped your phone, then it's not going to take you that long to restore it again while you're on the phone with them. Just because there's nothing for it to, to delete. Yeah. And, and, and this is one of the things. Uh, one of the things. In, and okay. the other, the other thing they're going to want to check is those little water sensitive stickers. Yeah, which everybody does. Yeah. Now, um, so I mean, one of the arguments that's come up about this, they don't want to put T-Mobile through uh, through this merger, is companies like T-Mobile, Sprint, who are on the bottom end, frankly, of of the race for uh, what cell phone 
supremacy yeah. have been the ones innovating, have been the ones with the cutthroat plans. Like, like I mentioned, $49 for talk, text, and voice. I mean, that's kind of, that's pretty that's pretty good. It is. Um, but my only question is is again coverage. You know, I travel a lot, and that plan look that 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 map looks a little bit sparse. But is it worth the price? And to get to a company that doesn't just tick me off every time I hear their name, and logo doesn't look like a Death Star. <laughs> no, instead you get a big pink T. You want the big pink tea? I like the big pink tea. Big pink tea. Yep, I'll take it. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with That's it. your big pink tea. That's you my tea. You a part of that big pink tea. Hey, you tea. know what? I, they haven't given me a reason to not want it. Uh-huh. So, I mean, I, I have no reason to not like T-Mobile. Mm-hmm. The price is right. The devices have been... All right, I, I would say they're good. <laughs> they're not they're excellent, good. but they're good. Yeah. And... I've never had a problem talking to them. All right. I always get results when I call, and I always hang up happy. So uh, tell me how Germany's, uh, if, if I can paraphrase you, been more progressive than uh, Nebraska? Well, I, after 17 years, Germany has legalized doom. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that Nebraska hasn't even seen doom yet. So... I think that's a pretty fair assessment. They're, they're further than Nebraska. Yeah, uh, for those those who don't know, uh, uh, Germany is pretty stringent on their their policy. Like if it gets above a certain point, they just don't have it in the stores. Right. And Doom was definitely one of those. Uh, I think it was it was labeled next to porn. Basically, am I am I remembering that correctly? Um, it was just too violent. Yeah, well, you know, they're they're very sensitive there in Germany after everything that's happened to them. <laughs> uh, so I mean, they, you know, that's understandable. But it is pretty, it is pretty incredible. I'm sure. Well, it is available still. I mean, I have it on my iPhone, my iPad. Um, Can you get Wolfenstein in Germany? In Germany? Yeah. I maybe the Super Nintendo version that had you fight giant rats <laughs> instead of the Nazis and dogs. Uh, but no, I, I can't think, because I'm pretty sure they I, I remember back when I thought that Wolfenstein was scary. <laughs> <laughs> well. It was that, because you would buy the, you could go to Radio Shack, and mm-hmm. they would have demo CDs for like 99 cents. Yeah, shareware. Yeah, shareware, ID shareware. And so you would get, uh, it would have like Quake for like two levels and maybe online play, and you could get, um, you get, uh, Wolfenstein. Mm-hmm. And Jazz wow. Jackrabbit? No, not, not no? Jack. No. Uh, the one that started with an H. Her- heretic? Yes, Heretic. Oh. Or Hexen. Actually, yes. uh, and not to interrupt you, but for the record, uh, the Quake demo did have online play. It did. Yes. It did. Yeah, yeah. You just so, didn't have too many levels. Yeah. I know I know. I never bought it, but there are a lot of games I didn't buy that played online. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 so so, thank you. Congratulations, Germany, for becoming so progressive. I uh, suppose I guess they review these uh, uh, every few years, and uh, I guess Gears of War is also up for maybe being allowed. <laughs> so I mean, that's that's a little sooner. Uh, you, hey, while we're on the video game thing, uh, I don't know if you saw my tweet. Um, I'm not sure if you responded to it. No, I don't have time to respond to tweets like that during the day. <laughs> No, you're no, it's not. Work, I'm you're not busy working tr- uh, yeah. or watching Amazon no, Prime. No, I'm not. Um. Trying to, <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean to it, but that would that would actually take a few responses. This is more of a blog post response, right? Okay, it, it's not okay. something well, that I this can is send. your plan. Now you're here. Let me let me get it. So I was I was going through and I popped up. I had a reboot. I had a problem like with the hard drive on my Xbox. I had a reboot and I saw it pop up. You know, they flash the ads on on your Xbox. Oh, the MK Arcade. Is now available, which is basically Mortal Kombat one, two, and three. You know, all classic resolution, as bad as that is. And I was looking at it, and I was thought about, I was like, okay, how many of these games have I bought multiple times? Now I, you know, as in like I had Duke Nukem back in the day. I bought Duke Nukem again for at least ten dollars on my uh, on my Xbox. I have Doom. I bought again on my iPad. Not to mention, we mentioned Steam before, how I've rebought uh, games that I had back on CD, so I know I have a digital copy that I can put on any computer anytime I want. My brother's the same way. So I posed the question on a few different platforms, and Facebook, uh, a lot of people came back at me on this. Uh, it, it was basically, how many, uh, how many 
of you bought a game multiple times like this? Uh, I did get one from the Riz, who joins us in the chat room usual. Uh, he says he got... Oh, no, this, this is about Mass Effect 2, actually. Uh, he Yeah, he bought Mass Effect 2 uh, so he could play the story once uh, Mass Effect 3 came out. Okay. Okay, uh, well, that's more of in a series. Right. Uh, but again, my brother, the original Doom, he bought the collection for the PC with Doom 2 and Final Doom, bought it again on Steam, again, so he can have it digitally, and also got both Doom and Doom 2 on Xbox Live Arcade, and the first of them on the iPhone. Right. He likes his Doom. Um, you, and you actually just did recently a review on that. Uh, he also says he bought the first Gears of War for the PC because of the extra content it had. Uh, then got it for the Xbox 360 because no, nobody was actively playing it online on the PC. Right. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> and, and, and do you want to show this video? Is this video queued up here? No, uh, but it can be. It is a YouTube? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is, this is one that Jesse, uh, Jesse the Mark that, uh, works over at IWCWrestling.com. He says, uh, I actually haven't gotten anything twice. No real reason. Just never have. But see, though, my whole thing about Mortal Kombat being released like that is the fact that this was absolutely correct. Go ahead and play this clip. Okay. This is this is uh, the cable guy from, what is it, 1996, 95? Something like that? Oh, wait, hold on. I gotta find the, the volume, sorry. It should be four. Okay, I keep thinking it's three. The volume is 11. Okay. Yeah. All right, here you go. Another. You can do your shopping at home. Oh, wait, or on. play Mortal Kombat. Sorry. Co- sorry. Oh, no. I, it, I clicked it to start at the beginning. Okay. And it jumped to the middle. You understand? Soon every American home will integrate their television, phone, and computer. You'll be able to visit the Louvre on one channel, or watch female mud wrestling on another. You can do your shopping at home, or play Mortal Kombat with a friend in Vietnam. There's no end to the possibility. The cable guy called it. 1996. 1996. Because, I mean, in 96, do we have any inkling that we would have uh, all three of those things on one bill. <laughs> no. no, I don't think so. No. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I barely had dial-up at the time. Yeah, no. I don't think I even had dial-up at the time where I was. Uh, Mad Mike in the chat room mm-hmm. would like to bring up the fact that Jim Carrey also called 3D TV in <laughs> Batman Forever <laughs> straight to your brain, and he also called reality TV in the Truman Show. So Jim Carrey has a a knack for playing characters that are. Told to Jim Carrey is a clairvoyant technologist. Yes. That's what he is. Well, technically, no. It's the writers. No, that, it's Jim Carrey. Right for he him. Is, he is. He's like, yelling, hey, you know, it would be really nice if we said this right here in this because it's completely going to be true listen, in 10 to 15 listen, years. What's that? Stop, What's that, Chachi? Stop yelling at me. Stop pointing at me. Or I will me. turn you down. You're, you're not even pointing at me. You're pointing at the camera, which is pointing at me. I know. It's kind of weirding me out. Uh, <laughs> Stop yelling at me, or I will turn you down. That just looks weird when, it do, when you do it that way. Um, but yeah, Jim Carrey. There you go. So what else is going on it here? It does look weird on the... Well, I, I, for the record, mm-hmm. uh, names of games that I've bought on multiple platforms. Okay. Uh, Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3. Um, Legend of Zelda. Mm-hmm. Um, and Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Anytime a new platform comes out that I don't have those games for. So we're talking Game Boy, Virtual Console, uh, you know. If I can buy those games for a different platform, I usually do. Okay, it's like, this needs to be here. And and that carries through pretty good. I mean, I I, I picked up uh, the Zelda pack uh, with the Nintendo Power subscription. They had the first couple that I've had on cartridge. Um, You know. uh, So, yeah. I'm actually looking at them, at them right now. They're right, right up there. Hey, there they are. Dude. Look at that. Okay, um, stop. Yeah, anyways. Back to the show. Back to the show. Uh, what time? So what else is going on, Rob? Anything catch, uh, catch your fancy in the last week? Is Rob still Other here? than the iPhone 5. Oh, Rob uh, is still here. I am still here. Hey. You were quiet because we were talking about video games. That happens. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I've, I've actually been pretty uh, been working. <laughs> I'm not, I don't. I don't have time for news. Well, it looks like somebody did it again with the iPhone five. Supposedly, oh, yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. This was um, silly, a, silly, a weird story. Apple it was one of those stories where like somebody tells it to you, and you're like, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I, I explain. Explain what you've heard about this story. I heard that somebody that found the iPhone five in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> like that hasn't happened before. 
<laughs> which makes it kind of believable because it's happened before. It's happened before, but it also makes it unbelievable because it's happened before. <laughs> like, really, you're gonna let it happen again? You're Apple. Does anybody learn from their mistakes? Why? Does no, like, somebody cry? told me this, and I was like, "What credible you, what? news is source?" Twenty ten uh, again? What's what? happening? Why is that guy still employed? <laughs> it's the same guy. <laughs> it's the same guy. And supposedly, uh, uh, supposedly, the uh, San Francisco Police Department showed up. Uh, at at his door, uh, with with uh, app, uh, Apple private investigators that claimed to be in person, claimed to be police, mm. and they came in and threatened everybody to see if they were legal citizens. <laughs> I mean, this is the weirdest story I've ever heard. It's just like this is like the new Law and Order uh, iPhone device squad. Law and I, Order, it, bum, bum, you iPhone. Know. Yeah, but it's, if it was like the little Law and Order in San Francisco, I know they tried that LA one that didn't work. Um, you know, this is what the this is what it would be. It was like uh, somebody lost the iPhone, or what else happens in San, San Francisco? I don't know. You can't see because it's foggy all the time. Um, <laughs> it'd be the easiest thing to shoot. Um, I mean, I mean, really, it, it's. Uh, Hello? Hate crimes against Apple and Google employees. Hello, I don't know. Steve. Um, yeah, I did it again. What do you mean you did it again? I got drunk and left the iPhone prototype. <laughs> I'm sorry, at the Uncle bar. Steve. Please I'm don't sorry. Me. <laughs> Law and Order Apple Store. Instead of the chimes, uh, it's the text message sound. <laughs> wow. There you go. There Amazing. You go. So um, silly, silly Apple employees. I don't know. It, uh, I you know I don't even care about the new iPhone anymore. It's been so long. I'm kind of still happy with my 3GS. I care about the new I kinda, iPhone. I kind of I'm kind of I'm kind of cool with that for now. I can keep waiting. I've waited this long. I expected one what four months ago now. That's your fault. It's my fault. Yeah, no one said it was coming out. You're it's the one that got your hopes up. Was that Rob? Everybody said it was coming out. Yeah, no one said it. You're imagining. I, at this point, when because everybody, you know, we're the You're people. imagining things. Uh, but, uh, October. At least in mid October. It's almost definitely mid October at this point. Uh, the fun one I heard today was that, uh, yeah, Steve Jobs is going to show up for one more thing, and it's going to be the Apple TV. If they, if they do with the Apple TV what I hope they're doing with the Apple TV, I'm going to do things that I cannot say on this podcast. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I, of the violent nature or of yeah, the happy which nature? Yeah, which way are you going with that? The happy nature. Oh, okay. The happy nature? Now, yes. what, are you, what, are, what are you supposing they're going to do with Is an this... Apple TV? Not the Apple TV as we know it, an Apple, as I heard today, Apple Space TV. Does this d- d- involve pants? I, no, there's no pants involved. I didn't think so. Oh. What what do you uh, think this TV is going to be? What is this TV? They, is this going to well, solve like this, hunger? The <laughs> the pieces are are almost for a while. I was saying that I wanted an Apple TV that TV that could run apps. Okay. Um, ideally, the next Apple TV will be not necessarily able to run apps natively, but will work with iOS five in such a way that allows you to get the most out of running applications on your iPad and mirroring them onto your Apple TV. Okay. Okay. That's if they if they pull that off and it works really what well, better to... than just the mirroring does right now. Mm-hmm. That'll that'll be a golden ticket. What, does it need to be a full TV, or is this just going to be a luxury item for the people that like Apple Cinema displays? I'm talking about the box, the Apple TV. You're talking about the box itself. Yes, which... I'm not talking about the big. Who's I mean, Apple has built. I, I forget who said this. Uh, I think it was Gruber. Uh, but Apple has absolutely built TVs with Apple things inside of them. They were prototypes. There were probably hundreds of them. Mm-hmm. You would probably never see the light of day. Okay, they're in the wall, the room of shame. The room yeah. of shame next to the <laughs> next to the cube. Yes, uh, next to the Lisa and the uh, the iPod socks. iPod socks. Yes. No, the iPod socks are in a place of uh, of pedestalness uh, in Steve's <laughs> place. Hey, next to that high five thing. Um, from the chat room, Scott, Sonic Screwdriver 3 says the new iPhone does care about me. And uh, Mad Mike thinks that it's going to be the Riddler's Enigma box. Um, unless you find one in a bar, he says. <laughs> so Wow. Yeah, yeah. We're just like, it, it's it's gone from news to just like insane rumors at this point. And it's ridiculous. Well, you know, Please. I heard. You heard. Oh, what'd yes, you hear? That Steve Jobs quit Apple. 
so that he can start working on the space program and go to Mars. Just throwing that out there. Just throwing that out there? Yeah. Completely the funny thing is Apple. that that's not too far-fetched. I that's, know. No, no. I mean, like, <laughs> Jeff Bezos has a rocket he shot off and self-destructed or something <laughs> like that. Oh, hey, you know what else happened? What's that? AOL fired Mike Arrington. Oh, okay. I was hearing something about him, but I didn't realize he was actually fired. Now, he's still blogging they, for them. They quote-unquote AOL fired uh, Mike Arrington in order to repair the TechCrunch brand. Okay, explain explain to people that uh, we don't talk about TechCrunch on here. There's a good reason for that. <laughs> yes, uh, well, even though we just did quote a text TechCrunch article today, but still, um, explain who this guy is and why he's important and why this is an important thing. <coughs> Cliff's <on>. notes. <coughs> oh, here he goes. He's getting he's getting ready for it. Here comes the soapbox. All right, let me get up on my soapbox. So, uh, Mike Arrington, um, I think he founded TechCrunch. Yeah, I think so. Uh, anyway, he's been running the joint for several years, and he has um, really built himself up as one of the most arrogant such and suches of the tech journalism industry, uh, putting a lot of stuff up on TechCrunch that is just uh, too opinionated for it to be journalism. And he treats TechCrunch as more of a soapbox, and he was also always the kind of guy to uh, press the wrong buttons and upset the wrong people. And he's never really been looked at by anyone, including, say, like, uh, the CEO of Yahoo, as any, any like, respectful... People people describe him as, like, the scum of internet tech news journalism. And uh, <clears throat> a little while ago, TechCrunch was bought by AOL, and apparently uh, this week AOL decided that in order to repair the damage that Mike Arrington had done to TechCrunch, they needed to fire him. <laughs> the damage he was done... Uh, there was I, I was hearing one thing they were talking about that he was trying to get himself fired, yeah. like by by all the crazy stuff he was doing. I I don't know. I I I I stay away from it mostly because of all the things I hear about him. And you know, I I, I never uh, found myself on TechCrunch. And by the time I found out what TechCrunch is, everybody else pretty much spoiled it for me. So I never I was like you know kind of like uh not in gadget Gizmodo's kind of. You know, Sully oh, today. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, it's like uh, that. Gizmodo. The whole Gawker network is kind of like yeah. Red I mean, they're real. I mean, it's more of the unfounded bloggingness to get headlines and hits than than news. You know, like I, I kind of like look at something like Engadget and uh, this is my next and and some of the other blogs is like yo, know, these are my news sources and and they seem more reliable as far as that is not something completely ridiculous. I mean, when you when you see a headline in Engadget that they think is kind of BS, you can kind of tell by the tone of the of the headline. Yeah. So, um, I mean, that's kind of my key. You know, much like The Daily Show is my source for news with a dose of satire, so is my tech news. So, I mean, through, via opinion, of course. Uh, <laughs> what the hell? Jim Carrey could host TechCrunch. He's on a roll. <laughs> Why not? Why not? He'd probably do better than Mike Arrington, right? So, well, on that note, guys, uh, I think that's going to wrap it for us today. Um, uh, but, you know, I, you know, we do have a sponsor here. We do. On the awesome hey, cast. Rob, how do you Rob feel loves. about Drobo? Oh, we're back. Oh, wow. Yeah. You, I, I, this is your soapbox. It tells yeah. why awesome. Why, why you're up every, there. Every week, you give us an anecdote about Drobo. That people could find on uh, awesomecast.com and click the Drobo link on the right there. Hey, hey. Uh, you're, uh, you're a video guy for a living, right? I tend weird. to be. That's kind of what we're doing now. <laughs> uh, let's say, uh, hypothetically, um, how much how much data do you have you hang on to from, from your jobs? Do, do you like what is sitting on hard drives upstairs right now? Yeah. You really want to know this number? Yes, I do. Uh, let's see, one and a half, five hundred. Oh, how much is in my Drobo? I want to say about eight terabytes. About eight terabytes of data. So let's say, uh, hypothetically, you're not using a Drobo to back up this data. Let's say you, uh, you know, you have this scattered across a few different drives. And let's say you wake up tomorrow morning and you get a phone call from a client. They say, hey, remember that shoot that we did in like August of 2007? Yeah, you still have those clips, right? Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. We're presuming um, I organized them that well. <laughs> First uh, and they say, they say, can you can you pull that up? We want to pay you a lot of money 
to uh, to redo some of that stuff. You say, sure. You plug in that drive, and all you hear is a click. How would that make you feel, Mike? <laughs> that would make me feel small, inadequate, and my heart would sink and shrink three smiz- sizes too small. Uh, and then I wipe out a, a village of uh, little elf people. Exactly. <laughs> and moments like that are why you should really have a Drobo. Uh, <laughs> Drobo is... A lot of people don't think about uh, how important their data is until you actually like run the numbers in your head of what would happen if all of your data got lost, whether you're a guy like Mike uh, who needs it to pay his bills, or if you, you know, you have photos of the kids, or you just have your own personal, like, you know, life history, or maybe you've got financial documents you need to hang on to. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you just have it on a regular hard drive, just like an external drive, you're not doing yourself any favors. Honestly, you're not. There are a lot of alternatives to that. There are SANS and NAS systems and all kinds of technical But, solutions. but Rob, that sounds too hard for me, the average Joe consumer, <laughs> to do. Exactly. Why that's don't why you know what that stands for? That's why uh, Drobo is here to make it easy. You could buy their absolute cheapest solution, which is like uh, I think it's like three hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. And then you're gonna go to like Newegg.com or something and buy the cheapest drives you can get your hands on. So it's gonna cost you like forty bucks for a terabyte or something ridiculous like that. And uh, you just pop a few of them in your Drobo, and you don't have to worry about your locally stored data ever again. You just don't. I was actually, uh, because of last week's question about uh, saying that the Amazon reviews are very sorted, mm-hmm. there are a lot of really great stories in the Amazon reviews for the, uh, the Drobo FS, including the guy who he had, he had five drives, and like all of them failed at once. Mm-hmm. He called up Drobo, and they spent something like 30 grand of their own money to repair his data for it. Oh, wow. That's how much they stand behind their products. Oh, wow. So no joke. You care about your data, you care about the things that you save, get yourself a Drobo, and uh, if, if you want more information on that, head over to awesomecast.com, little thingy on the right, use the little thingy on the right, it helps us know how many people are interested in this thing. Drobo. Click on the thingy, go to Drobo, and uh, learn all about it. There's a very nice uh, video by Kelly Lewis, I believe, mm-hmm. about... Uh, That's how I learned about it, and it is, <laughs> it is really nice, they also have videos for, like... Like, if you don't like reading, much like how we talk about Audible, I'm not a reader, so I'm not going to read instructions. And, uh, you know, I, they actually have video demonstrations of a lot of, you know, this is how you pull a drive to make sure you're not doing it at the wrong blinky light state <laughs> uh, that, that makes everything go bad. Um, and, uh, it, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, I enjoy my Drobo. I enjoy it a whole lot. And it's blinking right at me, and I know I need to get a drive as soon as my budget allows. <laughs> so, um, but I know I can get a cheap one. It'll be good. Um, and, and I learned right now that Chachi is the greatest person ever, according to this. What is going? Where is this oh. coming from? <laughs> is Comments. This? <laughs> Apparently, oh, the comments show up. I found out where the comments show up on the iPad. <laughs> And that refreshed, and you can just imagine what those colors say right now. Um, wow. Wow, that was a fun show, guys. That was a great time. And if you guys want to join us for a great time, a great, awesome time in the chat room, you can go to uh, live.sorgatronmedia.com, 7 p.m. Eastern. Every Tuesday, we're doing oh, this. you have it in front of you. That's fine. I brought up the, the little You're helpful good. Part. You're good. I see it. We're getting to that. Ooh. People can be exposed to that as long as they need to be on the screen because it's telling them that they can contact us at AwesomeCast on Twitter. AwesomeCast.com for all past episodes and information, and, and check out our sponsors. Uh, or you can email us, AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com, or contact at AwesomeCast.com, or call the hotline 72425ACAST. Hit us up on iTunes, MediaFly, Roku, Flip TV, YouTube. The first five people that email me and tell me that they've, uh, they've, uh, put something on iTunes in the comments, I will send you stickers for free. Nice. I will stuff an envelope of stickers and send it to you for free if you stickers. the first five people that leave yeah. comments on the awesome cast. Post up your thing and uh, take a screenshot of, of your comment. Yes. Yes, that would also be cool too. And send it to uh, contact, contact at awesomecast.com or awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Right. I realize I have both of them right here in front of me for so. some reason. So this has been the awesome cast. And hey, next week we got a video game character on the show. No, we don't. Yes, we Character. do. Character. Character. DJ Cutman 
He does uh, the bit tune, uh, uh, eight bit music stuff. Will be joining us. Oh, he was a video a... game character. What's that? Yes, he is, mm. and he's a DJ, and he's cut man, and he was across the across away from us at the uh, Baltimore Comic Con, uh, spinning some tunes all weekend. It was kind of nice between him and the uh, the guy doing um, um, uh, the bells, the bell music. Caribbean music from across the way. You mean it was still very drums? still drum music. I, that's the CD. I think it's still sitting over there. Peanut is his name. I'll tell that story sometime. Right, there it is. Wait, I there found it. There it is. Did you? I found <laughs> it. You want to hold that up? We'll give him a plug. Yeah. What's his name on there? It's uh Jason Peanut Isaac. There you go. And the CD is called Peanut Punch. That's right. He was hanging out. It was it was <laughs> not what I expected at a Comic Con, but it was pretty cool. <laughs> so thanks a lot, guys. And hey, podcamppittsburgh.com, episode sixty nine will be live as the wrap up show for Podcamp Pittsburgh on that Sunday. Please check it out. Uh we should be streaming, I believe, on here, if not here on Vivo Live. live. Either way, it'll be up. It'll be up. And this is episode sixty seven. This is so episode sixty seven. Two pants though in two episodes there will be two pants there'll be no, no pants. In two pants there'll be no episodes. Yes. So is that, uh, does that mean we're gonna be taking the Tuesday after pod camp off? I don't know. Maybe Yes. Really? Hell yeah. Uh, we'll, yes. We'll decide. Maybe we'll have a special show. Maybe we'll do a different show. We'll, we won't do awesome cast, we'll do something else. <laughs> Why, why, Chachi? You gotta put the camera on yourself. You're gonna give me a face like that. They can't see it because I'm sitting up too close. <laughs> what are you? T- <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, audio listeners. This is what are you looking at me like this for? Because, listen, <laughs> is it pod- too much awesome cast for one? No, it's week? not too much awesome cast. It's too much everything. <laughs> no, yes. you don't understand. Next week, I have one day to myself. One day. I get my birthday to myself. The rest of the week, I am booked. Booked solid. I, I have a concert Chachi, Monday. Chachi is taking no appointments right now. <laughs> I have a concert Monday. The show's Tuesday. Uh, pod camp stuff Wednesday. Thursday's my birthday. I'm doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> Friday is the meet and greet. Saturday's pod camp day one. Sunday's pod camp day two. I'm taking that week off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Awesome. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. No chatty that week. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm out. But thanks. Awesome cast. Awesome uh, audience. Awesome week. You know the drill. We'll see you next week. Wait, wait, wait.